Hello everyone, this is Chris at uh, saltwaterwitch.com and let's start with uh, M31, everyone's favorite, well, maybe not everyone, everyone's, I'll say, everyone's favorite northern hemisphere galaxy. So the Andromeda Galaxy, Messier 31, is our largest and most magnificent galactic neighbor. I'll argue that with anyone, even the southern hemisphere people. Although, damn, there's some great stuff in the southern hemisphere, but that's for a different video. So M31 is about 2.5 million light years away from Earth, or 780 kiloparsecs, if you are of a more serious demeanor. So here's my bicolor version in near infrared and hydrogen alpha. With the 685 nanometer IR long pass filter, as well as uh, the hydrogen alpha astronomic uh, 6 nanometer filter, I managed to get a ring in M110 NGC205. That's the dwarf elliptical galaxy and satellite of Andromeda. That's at the center and the bottom in this rotation. I wasn't expecting that. I'm assuming the rings, or one ring, are an artifact of processing or cutout gaps between band passes and the filtering, because M110 is an elliptical galaxy, which are evenly distributed. This is, you know, that's the definition. It's an evenly distributed bundle of stars without arms or distinguishable belts, like a spiral galaxy like our own Milky Way or M31. Anyway, I'm enjoying the variation I'm getting with infrared imaging, and there should be more on the way. I may upgrade to the Astrodon Sloan Gen 2 I, uh, near IR filter. That's a 695 to 844 nanometer. I may upgrade to this at some point, but so far I'm happy with the results of the much less expensive Optolong 6, 685 nanometer. And when I say much less, you know, both of these, neither of these filters is is that expensive. Uh, but there's a difference. I mean, the Optolong 685 is just a long pass. So, you know, in my limited experience, almost none, of how these filters are manufactured, I am assuming a long pass filter is much easier to, to create, generate, or manufacture than a, than a one that has a bounded band pass, a beginning and an end. But even so, so the Optolong is, uh, it starts at 685 and just goes from there. Uh, and... That's about eighty dollars U.S., and I believe the Astrodon Sloan Gen 2i is at six ninety-five to eight forty-four nanometers, so slightly shifted, slightly more toward the infrared. Uh, I believe that's a little over two hundred U.S. dollars. So we're not talking three nanometer narrow band prices. These these are reasonably priced at, you know, either eighty or two hundred. And I believe the Optolong is actually created was actually created for planetary imaging, which I don't typically do. So. Um, but it works well for this as well, apparently. So I'll, I'll keep, keep doing it. Okay, and one more for this video is, uh, and I, this is my second attempt at this, that's Sharpless 2-132. This is my second attempt uh, with SH-2132, sometimes called the Lion Nebula or Lion's Mane. It's a roughly square-shaped emission nebula or diamond in this rotation that I'm showing. Sharpless 2-132 is very faint and tough to capture without resorting to 10 or 20 minute exposures, depending on your filters, which in turn requires outstanding alignment and guiding, not to mention a cooled camera and a good stretch of clear sky. So I ran at negative 20 C, which is my normal, for 31 exposures in hydrogen alpha. And I only captured hydrogen alpha, hydrogen alpha at this point. So SH2132 is also in the middle or behind a dense field of stars, and that makes processing difficult when you're trying to bring out those faint cloudy structures. It's just too easy to bloat and overexpose the stars at the same time. It's all about balance, as you know. It's all about balance with stretching and keeping an eye on your stars. So far, I've only captured the hydrogen alpha frames. SH2132 also has a strong band of oxygen stretching, as well as uh, sulfur, but and I'll get to those. This beautiful band of oxygen blue stretching from the bright lower corner to the top. You can find Sharpless 2132 in the Perseus arm of our galaxy on the border between the constellations Cepheus and Lacerta. Uh, as usual, well, or lately with my uh, narrow band runs, I'm using a William Optics GT81, which I'm, I have at f4.7 because I have the uh, William Optics 0.8x flat 6A2. Uh, field flattener in there. Uh, I'm using astronomic filters, six nanometer filters for HA03 and sulfur, in this case just as HA. I've got a moonlight fo focuser on there. I'm using a ZWL ASI120MM for my off-axis guider. 
So uh, my imaging camera is a ZWO ASI 1600mm Pro, and uh, I, for these past few days, I was running on an, my Orion Atlas EQG mount. I stacked everything in Deep Sky Stacker, and I processed everything in Photoshop uh, CC 2019. Uh, again, these are this one for SH2132. That's 31 stacked subs uh, at 600 second exposures each. All right, that's it for this time. I'll uh, check in with more as I as I like basically create more videos. I uh, hope you like this. Check out my blog, saltwaterwitch.com. Clear skies, everyone. <laughs>